Travel consideration provided by. Who says you can't go for bold without going broke? Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. Eyes feeling dry? Tired? Stressed? Get a boost of moisture with BioTrue Hydration Boost Eye Drops for comfort throughout the day. They're preservative-free, gentle, and made with naturally inspired ingredients. Stay BioTrue to your eyes. You can expect the unexpected. Tomorrow on ET, Abbott Elementary is back. Our new interviews with the cast. Plus, we're taking the show to Las Vegas. We're counting down the Super Bowl 58 on CBS. All right, we leave you now with a tour of Sofia Vergara's personal L.A. paradise. Check that out, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Where happiness leaves the bar. Sophia opened up her police happening now. A verdict is in and the intoxication manslaughter case of Fabian Lopez will take you inside the courtroom as the judge reads that verdict. And another guilty verdict. Jennifer Crumley, now the first parent in history to be convicted of her child's attack on a school. Reaction from a victim's family member, plus how much prison time she could face. Next. A few changes coming down the pike that may affect some of your commutes. We'll talk about that and I have a full update on our weekend rain chances in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, running a red light will change at least two lives forever. After almost four hours of deliberations, a man on trial for intoxication manslaughter has been found guilty. Fabian Lopez convicted of causing a deadly drunk driving accident back in 2022 killing a 27 year old man. Erica Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom today as that verdict was read. We the jury find the defendant Fabian Anthony Lopez guilty of the offense of intoxication manslaughter. Fabian Lopez in tears after being convicted of intoxication manslaughter. Emotions running high inside the courtroom from both Lopez's family and that of Robert Gutierrez. Gutierrez was in a vehicle at the intersection of Protranco Road and Highway 151 when Lopez blew through a red light hitting the car. Gutierrez was killed instantly. During closing arguments, the defense said Lopez wasn't the only driver at fault and that Gutierrez's driver was also drunk. The state saying it didn't matter. Smash of the crash, and all of a sudden, all and the only thing that matters to them is what just happened, and what they all know just happened is they all had the green. Every witness who told you that the train line was green lied to you on the stand. In the end, the jury is siding with the state and coming down with that guilty verdict. Now, the punishment phase has already begun. They will deliberate punishment tomorrow, though, and they can pick anywhere from 2 to 20 years in prison. At the Kennedy Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. New at 5 after KSAT's investigation. Now more fallout today from those text messages between Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, his staff, and a group called the Wren Collective. The DA was served with a subpoena ordering him to hand over all communications between his office and the Austin-based Criminal Justice Reform Group. All of those related to the October 2022 shooting of Eric Cantu by a San Antonio police officer in a McDonald's parking lot. The attorneys defending the police officer including former DA Nico LaHood, want to see those text messages. Records obtained by KSAT last week showed the district attorney's first assistant had extensive discussions with the head of the Wren Collective about the Eric Cantu shooting, hours before Gonzalez dropped the charges against Cantu. The subpoena commands the DA's office to hand over those records tomorrow morning during a hearing for the man who shot Cantu fired San Antonio police officer James Brennan. In a statement, attorney Nico LaHood wrote in part, quote, these communications are necessary to present the court with a full picture of District Attorney Gonzalez's campaign to prejudice the jurors of Bear County against Mr. Brennan. We look forward to the district attorney's response and a full public airing of the Wren Collective's influence in this case, end quote. Case said will be covering that 9 a.m. hearing. A gunshots ring out, bullets pierce through a moving vehicle, striking the driver in the head and back and a passenger in his side twice. SAPD officers say the victims left a convenience store at the intersection of Blanco and Hildebrand about 10 o'clock last night. They tell us the victim's vehicle was driving away when someone in another vehicle started shooting, hitting the victims. 
They were able to drive to a nearby gas station to call for help. Both teenagers were taken to the hospital. Their conditions unknown. A third person in that vehicle at the time was not hurt. Right now, there is no description of the shooter or shooters. It has been a seven figure effort to bail out defendants awaiting trial in Bear County, but the Texas Organizing Project's Right to Justice program has not been without some controversy. After Shane James was arrested last year and accused of killing six people, including his own parents, Top was chastised for previously bailing out James in a family violence case. KSAT investigates found other defendants set free by Top who continued to break the law after getting out. He just grabbed and go. He just, he just, everything that looked like high priced items, that's what he took. Coming up at six o'clock today, why supporters of the bail program say it's doing some important work. It is a first in American history, a guilty verdict in the Jennifer Crumley trial. She's the Michigan mother facing charges after her son shot and killed four students at his high school in 2021. Like you said, this is the first time parents have been charged in a case like this. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, the jury four person says the verdict, quote, came down to the fact that Jennifer was the last adult with the gun, end quote. A historic moment in this Michigan courtroom Tuesday. On count one of involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. A guilty verdict for Jennifer Crumbly on four counts of involuntary manslaughter. The first parent in U.S. history to be convicted in their child's attack. Crumbly closing her eyes as the verdict was read. Moments later, she was cuffed and let out of the courtroom with her head down. A jury of six men and six women coming to the decision after roughly 11 hours of deliberation over the course of two days and two weeks of testimony. Crumbly had pleaded not guilty after her son Ethan opened fire at Oxford High School in 2021, killing four classmates and injuring seven others. Families of the victims inside the courtroom. Craig Schilling, whose son Justin was killed, reacting to the verdict, asked what he would say to Jennifer Crumbly. You wouldn't have to go through any of this if you would have just done your job as a parent. Prosecutors arguing Jennifer Crumbly and her husband bought the gun used in the shooting, failed to secure it, and ignored red flags concerning his mental health and that she could have prevented the tragedy had she done the smallest thing differently. Crumbly taking the stand in her own defense. That was the hardest thing I had to, <clears throat> to stomach is that my child har harmed and killed other people. I wish she would have killed us instead. The defense saying any other mother could have easily been in her shoes and she never could have known her son was a threat. Ethan Crumbly pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Jennifer Crumbly will be sentenced in April. She's now facing up to 60 years in prison. Her husband James faces the same charges. He's pleaded not guilty and his trial is expected to begin next month. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In more headlines this Tuesday, country singer Toby Keith, known for hits like Red Solo Cup and I Want to Talk About Me, has died. Keith had been battling stomach cancer. According to a statement on his website, Keith passed peacefully last night, surrounded by family. Back in 2022, he was diagnosed with cancer, but still performed, including at People's Choice Country Awards last year, where he received the Country Icon Award. Toby Keith was 62. He leaves behind a wife, Trisha, and three children. Former President Donald Trump not immune from prosecution for alleged crimes he committed to reverse the 2020 election results. That's according to a federal court ruling today. The decision considered a blow to his key defense in the federal election subversion case brought by special counsel Jack Smith. Trump has argued that he had presidential immunity and his conduct to overturn the election fell within his official duties. He's pleaded not guilty to all charges, including conspiring to defraud the United States and to obstruct an official proceeding. The ruling can be appealed directly to the Supreme Court. People are obsessed with these things, those supersized Stanley Cups that come in a rainbow of colors. And thanks to TikTokers, sales of the insulated tumblers are soaring. I mean, people go wild when they're trying to buy them. But now there are some questions about whether these cups contain lead. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz gets to the bottom of it. The craze is as big as the cup. The Stanley Quencher is a must-have for millions, trending on TikTok, even getting spoofed on Saturday Night Live. It's more than just a cup. It's a big cup. But it wasn't funny when reports that the tumblers contained lead hit social media. 
So what's fact and what's hype? Lead poisoning prevention activist Tamara Rubin did some testing. Using XRF technology, we discovered that the exposed ceiling dot on the bottom of the Stanley Tumblers was positive for a very high level of lead. She's talking about the ceiling dot. So if you have one of these Stanley Tumblers, tip it over. And on the bottom, you see here this nickel-sized button. Underneath that, that's where the leaded material is. Countless consumers have contacted us and let us know that their little button of stainless steel with the logo has fallen off and that they were not aware that there was basically um, a hunk of bioavailable lead. If children are exposed to lead, it can cause developmental problems and lead to a lower IQ. Stanley's website does disclose that its sealing material does include some lead and states, quote, rest assured that no lead is present on the surface of any Stanley product that comes into contact with the consumer nor the contents, unquote. If you own one of these and the bottom button comes off, stop using it. You can contact the company for a replacement. You should also know Stanley's not alone. Consumer Reports says many similar products are made the same way using lead solder. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside. Let's go to I-35 and Space Center, and we're going to talk about rotten vegetables and a big backup. Ooh. This is the scene at I-35 and Space Center down to one lane right now, and this scene isn't that much different from what it was around 1 a.m. this morning. Let's go to that video. San Antonio police say vegetables spilled out onto the highway. Those vegetables had been condemned and quarantined by Homeland Security due to the possibility they contained insect larvae inside them. Rotten veggies. They tell us a hazmat crew was needed to offload the vegetables. That was part of the problem. Rush hour traffic this morning in the area, creeping at best, kind of like it's doing right now. The drivers of the tractor trailer and the vehicle that officers say was rear ended were taken to the hospital for evaluation. Oh, it is never too early to talk Fiesta, and today was proof it's getting closer. We got a first look at this year's Niosa medal, or should I say medals? The first is inspired by Mexican folk art and Talavera pottery, but there are not one but two medals this year. The second medal features the iconic Niosa souvenir, the Niosa beer cup. Why don't we have a year bar beer cup? So this medal has been designed to where every year you'll be able to attach a little miniature beer cup to the end of that medal. Who knows, you know, how many years will go forward and you'll have a whole long string of little tiny beer cups on your medal. Smart. I like that. You can buy each Niosa medal for $13 at three different locations. They're available at the Niosa office, Monarch Trophy Studios, and Maddie Mac Boutique. The proceeds help support the Conservation Society of San Antonio. This will be the 76th year of Niosa during Fiesta, and it runs April 23rd through the 26th at La Vita. I like that. It comes with the beer cup commemorator. Yeah. DD with his uh, art there, artwork unveiling it at the event today. Beautiful. All right. It's hard to believe Fiesta's just around the corner. I want to show you the visible satellite imagery. This is important because we have these high thin clouds streaming overhead from the northwest to southeast. Remember, these make for beautiful sunrises and sunsets. So we've got uh, great to almost can't miss it. Sunset scale this evening. Best viewing between 6.05 and 6.30 p.m. It'll be comfortable. Temperatures in the lower 60s. So have your cameras ready and be prepared to upload your beautiful shots to KSAC Connect through the Weather Authority app. Temperatures right now around 70 degrees, 68 in Mico, 68 Bulverde, Lavernia at 68 degrees. As we go through the evening hours, those high thin clouds and temperatures falling nicely. We'll be 57 at 9 o'clock and by midnight we're closer to 50 degrees. We do have a few changes to talk about that could affect a few morning commutes along with an update to the weekend rain chances in a bit. Thank you, Adam. You know, each year the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio recognizes a local leader for their contributions to the city. See how this year's winner took his mother's idea and used it to help others around him. That story next on the News at 5. Here's a look at what we're working on for the news at six o'clock. A colorful, calming room is now in every San Antonio Police Department substation. They're called safe rooms, spaces where victims can give statements, meet with their advocates. 
At 6 o'clock, how an abuse survivor and police detective both say these rooms directly translate to more safety. An iconic San Antonio theater brought back to life right in time for a brand new show. I'm Max Massey. We're going to give you an inside look. That and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Every year, a group of young San Antonians vie for Youth of the Year honor and hope to take their story of hardship and success nationally. The Boys and Girls Club also has another tradition, this one to honor a local adult who has their own amazing story to tell. Ursula Perry now with this year's recipient, Leo Gomez, a man who took his mother's hopes for him and impacted the city in a major way. His resume sounds like he made it up. I got recruited to become president of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I did that for three years and then got recruited to become a vice president of the San Antonio Spurs. I left the Spurs to go to Toyota, where I was the GM of administration, helped build the plant, hire the first 2,000 people, and then I went back to the Spurs uh, for another eight years. And those are just the highlights. Later, he landed here at Brook City Base. Just the last 10 years has encompassed over $1.3 million in development. But this year alone, we've got over half a billion under construction. It's pretty incredible. Incredible indeed, especially if you find out what the young Leo Gomez faced as the child of a single mother on San Antonio's south side. Recently divorced and placed both her sons in the boys club uh, during the summer so that we wouldn't be doing things we shouldn't be doing during the summer. And a lot of what I think about today was rooted in what I learned at the Boys and Girls Club. He says he learned strategic thinking through chess and checker competitions, tactical strategy through playing war ball, and how to box in a fair fight. And I won a few. I got beaten up a lot. It was good for me as a boy growing up to fight fairly and do it in an environment where there was adult supervision. Fighting is no longer part of the program, and instead of it being called the Boys Club, as it was back in Leo's day, it is the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio. He says his mother had high hopes for him, thinking he would be president of the United States. He felt just short of that, but still a great role model for San Antonio kids. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Boys and Girls Club does a lot of good in the community. They really do. By the way, what a nice day today was. Oh my gosh, look at the sun. Bright it's sunshine. Still out there. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. It really it was. was. Like and you said, did you say last night that this is what the summer yep. of all those long, heat, hot days, we deserve this. Yeah, we earned this. Yeah. We worked for it all summer. We didn't know we were, but we did. And now we deserved and earned these days. Let's talk about our next chance of rain because we could still use the moisture around here. The drought conditions need it. The aquifer needs it. Guadalupe River area reservoirs, they need it. We boosted our Saturday rain chances up to 40%. So a little bit better odds than what we were thinking previously. And that's with the shift in our weather pattern that's coming our way. You see all the moisture from the atmospheric river in the southwestern U.S. that's just streaming on shore. A narrow band of mid and upper level moisture will be sliding overhead with some energy around here because we have this big dip in the upper level flow, that trough that's going to be moving eastward and that's going to throw some energy overhead along with a little bit of extra moisture. That's not really until Saturday when we can introduce the chance of rain. But notice the secondary low with that trough moves in and that should kickstart some areas of rain on Saturday. I think favoring the first part of the day opposed to the latter half of the day. That of course will be changing as we get closer to Saturday, but that's our best shot at some rain. I don't think it'd be a big drought denter, but better than nothing. 68 right now, dew point of 38. Dewey's not bad, feeling good in the 30s to near 40. This will be changing though, as the wind starts coming off the Gulf of Mexico first thing tomorrow, dew points rising, even feeling a little muggy outside Friday and Saturday. Now with those higher dew points will be some morning fog. Brief morning fog tomorrow, not very widespread or too dense, but maybe more problematic by Thursday. At that point, damp and drizzly and foggy in the morning. 
tomorrow morning. Not too bad, just some of that isolated brief fog, but a little cool. Low to mid 40s, 43 Bulverde, 46 Stinson, 46 in Seguin. 43 in Hondo. By noon, we're up to 63 and then 70 for the high temperature tomorrow. And after that morning fog, we'll squeeze in some afternoon sunshine right around 70 for the afternoon high temperature. A cold front does arrive on Sunday. That'll impact particularly our mornings into next week. We'll get into that more coming up at 6. Okay, we'll see you then. Thanks, Adam. All right, so we're roughly halfway through the season. Yep. A lot of lessons, I'm guessing, to be learned there. Absolutely, with Victor Wimbanyama. And I'll tell you what, he just makes the game look so easy, doesn't he? So we are over halfway through the NBA season. And that's what Wimby was asked before they left for the rodeo road trip. What surprised him the most? And last night was Super Bowl opening media night. We got it coming up. I like soft tacos, but I'll do hard tacos. You know, both sound good to me, Coach Reed. Super Bowl opening night is all about asking the coaches and players some non-football questions in big board sports. Can't go wrong either way. Now, the Spurs left for Miami today as they get ready to tip off their nine-game rodeo road trip. And first up, the Miami Heat. Rookie Victor Wimbanyama, who's averaging a double-double this season in points and rebounds, has 44 NBA games to his credit. Yesterday, he was asked what has surprised him the most about playing in the NBA. The hardest battle isn't, you know, the, the physical one. It's, it's more mentally, you know, going in the court every, every night and, uh, you know, fighting for your team, you know, fighting because somebody else in front of you wants to, to, to kill you, to dunk on you all night, you know, and uh, fighting because we got a lot of progress to do and, you know, it's, it's hard to apply what the coach says, you know. This is the, probably the, the thing that surprised me how this is the hardest battle and not the physical one, you know. So the Spurs will start the rodeo road trip tomorrow night, 630 at Miami. Then they'll play Thursday night at Orlando. After that, they'll play at Brooklyn, Toronto and Dallas before the All Star break. Yesterday, we told you about the San Antonio Brahma's 2024 schedule that kicks off Sunday, March 31st at the Alamo Dome against the DC Defenders, one of 10 regular season games for the Brahma's. But before that, the Brahma's will host a kickoff event at the Alamo Dome. And that event is Sunday, February 18th at the Dome from 2 to 4 p.m. Fans will be treated to a Panel discussion with UFL head of football operations Daryl Moose Johnson and Brahma's head coach Wade Phillips. The event is free and open to the public with free parking. Kids' activities, chances to win tickets, and signed memorabilia will also be available. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Last night in Las Vegas was Super Bowl opening night, formerly known as Super Bowl Media Day. Media members from all over the place met with players from the 49ers and the Chiefs at Allegiant Stadium to talk with both sides about the game and many other topics. You never know what's going to happen. Niners tied in George Kittle was having a good time during his Q&A. Oh, dude. We have more fun than anybody else out there, man. We got so many great players. Uh, we have the best offensive lineman in the, in the history of the game. Nick Bosa's quads are bigger than my torso. Um, we've got superheroes on the team. And so also, hey, being faithful to the Bay is a really fun thing. Bosa. <laughs> Big quads. Yeah. I'm still thinking about tacos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you at 6.